In the fall, the war was always there, but we did not go to it anymore. It was cold in the fall in Milan, and the dark came very early. Then the electric lights came on, and it was pleasant along the streets looking in the windows. There was much game hanging outside the shops, and the snow powdered in the fur of the foxes, and the wind blew their tails. The deer hung stiff and heavy and empty, and small birds blew in the wind, and the wind turned their feathers. It was a cold fall, and the wind came down from the mountains. We were all at the hospital every afternoon, and there were different ways of walking across the town through the dust to the hospital. Two of the ways were alongside canals, but they were long. Always, though, you crossed a bridge across a canal to enter the hospital. There was a choice of three bridges. One of them, a woman, sold roasted chestnuts. It was warm, standing in front of her charcoal fire, and the chestnuts were warm afterward in your pocket. The hospital was very old and very beautiful, and you entered through a gate and walked across the courtyard and out a gate on the other side. There were usually funerals starting from the courtyard. Beyond the old hospital were the new brick pavilions, and there we met every afternoon and were all very polite and interested in what was the matter, and sat in the machines that were to make so much difference. What did you do before the war? Did you play a sport? Yes, football. Good, you'll be able to play football better than ever. My dream is to fly over the rainbow so high. My dream is to fly over the rainbow so high. Hey. What will you do when the war's over? I will go to the States. Are you married? No, but I hope to be. Oh, me must not me. Only a fool would me. Why, Senor Maggiore? Don't call me Senor Maggiore. Why must a man not marry? He cannot marry. He cannot marry. If he is to lose everything, he should not place himself in a position to lose. He should find things he cannot lose. But so why should he necessarily lose it? He'll lose it. He'll lose it. Don't argue with me. He went back into the other room for the light treatment and the massage. Then I heard him ask the doctor if he might use his telephone, and he shut the door. When he came back into his room, I was sitting in another machine. He was wearing his cape and had his cap on, and he came directly toward my machine and put his arm on my shoulder. I am so sorry. I would not be rude. My wife has just died. You must forgive me. Oh, I am so sorry. It is very difficult. I cannot resign myself. I am utterly <coughs> able <laughs> to resign myself. The doctor told me that the major's wife, who was very young and whom he had not married until he was definitely invalided out of the war, had died of pneumonia. She had been sick only a few days. No one expected her to die. The major did not come to the hospital for three days. Then he came at the usual hour, wearing a black band on the sleeve of his uniform. When he came back, there were large framed photographs around the wall of all sorts of wounds before and after they had been cured by the machines. In front of the machine, the major used were three photographs of hands like his that were completely restored. I don't know where the doctor got them. I always understood we were the first to use the machines. The photographs did not make such difference to the major because he only looked out of the window.